In this video, we're going to take a look at using the new features included in Shader Graph 6.9.1 to build a custom tune shader that not only receives light direction information from our scene, but also reacts to the color and intensity of all the lights in our scene. We'd like to thank Minions Art, who has provided us with the awesome character asset and the concept which we'll be using for our shader. You can find more information about Minions Art and some other great shader tutorials she has made by following a link in the description below. To create our tune shader, we've used a series of subgraphs and custom shader functions that allow us to receive the lighting data from the scene. First, let's take a look at our main shader graph and how we've used our custom lighting to build our tune effect. Here we have our Calculate Lighting node. This is a subgraph that contains everything we need to get the lighting from the scene. We're feeding in both a specular color value and a smoothness value, both of which are exposed properties in our material. The specular reflection is only visible when our surface normal is halfway between the direction of our incoming light and the direction of our viewer. This is referred to as the half angle direction. As you can see, if I change the specular color on our owl and set the smoothness to zero, notice how now we have this banded seam. If I move the camera around, you can see that the seam moves with the camera. Additionally, if I move the main light around, you can also see the location of our specular reflection move on our character. This is due to the half angle direction changing. Once we've calculated our lighting, we add the specular and diffuse together. This creates a blend between the two values lighting data to get a really nice result. If we take a look at the two values individually, by linking one to the color node like so, and then linking the other one, we can get a better understanding of how the two values work and how they look on our model before they're added together. Once the lighting data is added together, we start to manipulate it to create our tune shading effect. The smooth step node is the basis of our tune shading effect. This node is similar to the lerp node, but instead of linearly interpolating between two values, the smooth step node uses smooth hermite interpolation instead. This means the interpolation will gradually speed up from the start and slow down toward the end. This can also be a useful node for creating natural looking animation, fades, and other transitions. As you can see, we're using the lighting data as the input for our smooth step. We're then using an offset and smoothness value to determine how our smooth step function operates. If we take a look on our character, we can see it in action. When we adjust the offset here, we're changing where the smooth step function begins. The smoothness value changes how sharp the edges are. A value of zero will create a hard edge, a value of one will create a smooth edge. So we have a lot of control over the style of our tune shading effect. After our smooth step node, we add a float value to the output to adjust the brightness. You can see that as we change this value, it gives us control over the brightness of the darker areas on our material. The final step in the shader is to multiply all this with a texture sample. The texture sample node will allow us to take the colors from a flat painted texture file and map them to our model based on its UVs. This gives us a fully textured, fully stylized tune shaded model. With all this in mind, let's take a look at how we're calculating our lighting. Let's hook up the diffuse and specular output to the color input of our model to get a closer look at what's going on. Then let's open up our calculate lighting subgraph. As you can see here, we're calculating our main lights and our additional lights, adding the result of both together and then outputting them to our shader. Again, if we grab the outputs of each of our calculations independently, we can get a much better idea of what's happening before they're added together. Let's take a look at our subgraph for calculating our main light. We have another subgraph that's getting the main light from our scene. We're then using the light direction and world positional normal vector to perform an n.l operation and getting the light attenuation and multiplying them to create a shaded result. Again, if we take a look at the output from these two individually, we can see the result of both of these operations more clearly.
let's take a look at how we're getting our main light. In this subgraph, we have a custom function node. This is a node that lets you inject your own custom HLSL code into shader graphs. You can either write small functions directly into the graphs using the string mode, or reference external HLSL, including files. As you can see here, we're using the custom lighting HLSL script included in this demo to get the main light data from our scene and outputting the results to our subgraph. You can see that we're also using custom functions in our direct specular and calculate additional light subgraphs to get the additional data we need for our lighting calculations for our secondary lights. The addition of custom function nodes makes it easy for you to inject more complex and more detailed written shader calculations into your shader graphs and extends the possibilities of the kinds of shaders you can create in your project. To download the demo project and try building a tuned shader yourself, follow the link in the description below. And don't forget to check out the link in the description for more great shader tutorials by Minions Art on our own page. Thanks for watching.